This is a Fishbowl Inventory Overview Demo by Lance at Brando Consulting, Fishbowl Inventory Expert since 2006. If you're looking for a tutorial video, be sure to subscribe and look for the topic you're searching for. So first of all, let's start here on the home screen. You'll see the top row across the top is purchasing, the bottom row across the bottom is sales. Everything goes in fishbowl through a purchase order. Everything goes out of fishbowl through a sales order. The only exception is work orders. Work orders can both reduce and increase inventory. And then of course there are cycle count adjustments and inventory adjustments. So that's the, that's the inventory flow. Now if we were to back up and just say what is fishbowl? Fishbowl is an inventory management software, of course, right? We can go to an inventory screen and see what we have in inventory. We can run an inventory valuation summary report and see what our total value of inventory is. There's our inventory valuation summary report. So of course, first and foremost, it's an inventory management software, but it also performs inventory control. Fishbowl has a picking screen. This is the screen that allows you to control your inventory. It works hand in hand with the location settings and it works hand in hand with the user rights settings. In Fishbowl, user rights can be divided so one person decides what to pick and another person performs the pick. So that brings up another definition of what Fishbowl is. Fishbowl is a warehouse management software. Fishbowl has both receiving management, where a purchase order can be received, a transfer order can be received, a sales order can be returned, and it has a shipping screen that allows you to coordinate with a carrier software in printing shipping labels. Packing lists and bill of ladings can be printed out of Fishbowl. You can use Fishbowl to manage your packages and your shipments. The receiving, picking, packing, and shipping steps can all be performed on a mobile device as well. Having this scanning ability and convenient touch screen, human error and latency are both greatly reduced. So let's bring you to the sales order where it all begins. Here a sales order can be manually entered or Using one of the many integrations to shopping carts and marketplaces, sales orders can automatically be created in mass through a powerful plugin or integration. A sales order in Fishbowl begins as an estimate. After you select the customer and the products that you want, you click issue and email a confirmation to the customer if you'd like. Now from here, you can either go to picking if you have inventory available to fulfill the order, or you can go to manufacturing or purchasing to produce the inventory you need. With Fishbowl's manufacturing tools or reorder report, you can quickly determine what you need to purchase or what you need to manufacture. No longer do you need a complex spreadsheet requiring manual updating every time inventory is decreased or moved or increased. Manufacturer orders and work orders follow the same design as sales orders, changing the status from an entered to an issued status, similar to the sales order estimate issued. The work orders have a start and finish time. You can also assign a station to your work order, allowing you to manage the capacity of each station. Once the work order is scheduled, issued, and a station is assigned, it will show up clearly on the calendar, and you can determine whether you've double booked. After a purchase order is created, and your inventory is received, and any serial numbers or lot numbers required are entered, like so, Fishbowl queues up a posting transaction to debit inventory and credit payables and creating an item receipt in QuickBooks. The inventory received can now be viewed on the inventory screen. You'll see what location it's in, meaning what rack it's on. You can also see which warehouse building it's in. 
if you have multiple warehouses. If you have user rights to view inventory values, you can see the cost of the inventory from this screen as well. Now the inventory is ready to be consumed in a manufacturer order or shipped from a sales order. So the next step in this example would be to pick the work order and close the work order out. Here we see work orders on the picking screen and items to be picked for the work order. You can be as detailed as you'd like, or there's even an option to skip the entire picking process altogether. We can print out a paper pick ticket, which tells us which rack or which pallet location to go to to find that inventory. Or we can train our guys in the warehouse to use a mobile device for picking. Here a pick will show up on the mobile device and each item for the work order is listed with the stock location it will be found in. The picker will tap or scan the location and the product number and pick. There are several different options and settings for picking to choose from. Once the pick is finished and all items have been picked, we're ready to begin manufacturing. From the manufacturing screen or the work order screen, a work order traveler can be printed out. If you'd like to record actual consumption, this document will help you do that. Once the work order is completed, we are ready to record what was consumed and what was produced. In the work order finish wizard, actual consumption can be recorded, whether it's more or less than you originally intended it to be. If you prefer to consume the original standard quantity, that step can be completely skipped by selecting this option settings right here. The quantity produced can also be more or less than you originally intended it to be. Once you finish the work order, the components and raw goods come out of stock and the part you manufactured goes into stock with a value that equals the sum of all the parts, including labor if labor was included. Now that we have purchased and manufactured, we are ready to pick any sales orders that were previously low on stock. On the picking screen, green, yellow, and red are indicators of stock levels and availability. The green are ready to be completely fulfilled. The yellow are ready to be partially fulfilled. The picking process for a sales order is the same as it is with a work order. The only difference is the direction the inventory is moving. Now it's moving from stock into the shipping and packaging location, or for freight, it may be going directly to the truck. Once we have picked inventory for a sales order, it will show up on the sales order screen, or excuse me, the shipping screen, as available to be packed and shipped. In this example, I'm the administrator and have rights to every warehouse, but the user for the mobile device only has rights to one of the warehouses, and they only see what can be packed for their warehouse. Packing is very simple using the mobile device. Simply tap the order, tap the item to be packed, the quantity that goes on the pallet or in the box, tap pack and repeat. And a packing list can be printed from the mobile device as well. For partial shipping, the batch shipment feature works great. Use this feature when the truck comes to pick up the pile, whether it's UPS, FedEx or UPS, USPS or other carriers. Fishbowl integrates with UPS, it integrates with Indicia, it integrates with FedEx, Ship Manager, XPS Ship is an integration Brando Consulting partners with. Fishbowl also integrates with ShipStation. Once your items are packed, go to your carrier software, enter in the order number or process a batch of shipments and print out your shipping labels from your carrier software or for simple UPS orders print out your shipping label directly from Fishbowl. Once your shipping label is printed in your carrier software the tracking number and the cost of that package will automatically flow back to Fishbowl. Fishbowl then has automation in place to push a packing list with the tracking number with an email template also including the tracking number to the customer announcing that their order has been shipped. Powerful automation that greatly reduces inbound customer service calls. At this point Fishbowl has generated a journal entry for the manufacturing adjustment done previously and as soon as we process shipment 
Fishbowl queues up an invoice ready to be sent to QuickBooks. You can schedule an export to QuickBooks to happen periodically, or you can manually initiate an export to clearly see what's going to QuickBooks. Fishbowl integrates with QuickBooks Desktop, QuickBooks Online, and Xero. Anything that should create a journal entry is pushed to QuickBooks. Item receipts, vendor bills, invoices to customers, sales receipts, payments received, credit memos, cycle count adjustments, or manufacturing adjustments, to name a few. Once the transactions are sent to QuickBooks, QuickBooks behaves as your general ledger, your AR manager, your AP manager, and is used for your financial reporting. Not only does Fishbowl integrate with QuickBooks, Xero, and QuickBooks Online, but it also works with Avalara if you have complex tax requirements. Fishbowl also has a time and labor component, so you can track your labor and allocate it to your work orders in Fishbowl. Fishbowl also integrates with CRM, Zoho, Salesforce, and Brando Consulting has created a third one for Method CRM. For those of you who also do counter sales, Fishbowl makes that easy with Fishbowl Checkout. Simply scan, 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 and check out. Swipe the card, and you're done. Fishbowl is a desktop software, meaning the database resides on your machine or on a hosted server. If you'd like anyone to access Fishbowl from anywhere, Use the Fishbowl Anywhere feature to accomplish that. Everything you see here will appear in a web browser. A couple other mentionable features would be foreign currency, transfer orders, and class tracking. And that's pretty much a wrap. Give me a call if you have any specific questions about features that your business requires that this video left uncertain.